right, let's go back on the record then. All right, we're back on the record in the 53rd Circuit Court. We had to take a couple matters that were on the youthful training docket. So those were non-public. So we're back on the public docket. The courtroom is open and we're providing public access not only in the courtroom, but back on our online forum. And up next is People of the State of Michigan versus Robert Gillespie, file 20-5952FH. And we have Mr. Gillespie here in the courtroom today, along with his attorney, Mr. Kreski, and the prosecuting attorney, Ms. Goodrich. So time and date set for a docket call. Uh, do you know how we're proceeding, Mr. Kreski? Uh, yeah, Your Honor, I, I know we approached and had a bench conference earlier regarding this matter. I think there's, um, I think we're very close to a resolution on this matter. I, I know there needed to be some discussion with uh, the victim regarding uh, some of the offers that were made in exchange. I would ask for a very uh, brief adjournment of this docket call, maybe two weeks if Your Honor would entertain that to uh, possibly resolve that matter. If not, I, I think we're uh, we'll proceed forward with, with the trial at that time, but I think there's uh, a resolution on the verge here. Okay. Well, we have um, at the tail end of the docket on August 10th, we have um, three things all scheduled with, with you. It will be Hall, Edinger, and Roberts. And then there is a gun rights restoration petition at 3.30. Um, I guess I could uh, schedule this at, um, at 3.40 on that date, just on the so we don't make the uh, petitioner wait around. We'll take that, but he'll be around anyway. Is there any objection to adding that? I mean, sort of a long afternoon, but. Okay. Okay, so we'll continue this docket call then to August 10th at 3.40 in the afternoon to be held in person. Anything further on this file? There you go, thank you. All right, so we're next up in People of the State of Michigan versus Lacey Midyet, file 21-6154FH. We have Ms. Midyet in the courtroom with her attorney, Mr. Kukeski, the prosecuting attorney, Ms. Goodrich. We're providing public access in the courtroom and online. We're here for a docket call. Do you know how we're proceeding, Mr. Uh Yes, Your Honor, and um, this is another matter that I kind of recently came out of this file. It's not as old as some of the files that I do have on the docket. Again, I, I think we're uh, nearing a resolution in this matter. There is um, a matter Ms. Midian is taking care of over in Emmett County that uh, I'd like to see resolved in the disposition um, of that case before it really um, I can get a proper reading on uh, scoring her in uh, the offer that's been made by the prosecutor. So I'd ask the court to maybe set this for an additional docket call at this time. Any objection, Ms. Goodrich? No objection. The uh, 
August 31st date. You're here for three cases for a docket call in person. You want us to just add it then? That would be fine, Your Honor. We'll continue this then for a docket call on August 31st. 3.10 p.m. to be held in person here in the courtroom. Anything further on this file? Not this time, Your Honor. Thank you. We'll see you then, Ms. McGinn. Thank you. Right. Looks like uh, our last remaining matter is Mr. Mann. Yes, he, uh, he is out in the hallway, Your Honor. I haven't had a chance to speak with him, so I may take five minutes. Okay. All right. We'll go off the record then. We'll let us know when you're ready to go. Very good. Thank you, Your Honor.
All right. We're uh, next up is people of the state of Michigan versus Daniel Nash. It's filed two zero dash six zero two three FH, and we have uh, Mr. Nash present with us in the courtroom, along with his attorney and the prosecuting attorney as well. We're providing public access both online and in the courtroom, and we also have the. Uh, Complaining witness, as I understand it, appearing by Zoom video as well, which is a right under the Constitution and laws of the state of Michigan. And so, Mr. Kukeski, this is uh, here for a docket call and also your motion to amend bond conditions. Uh, you want to go ahead and argue anything with regard to your motion first? Uh, thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> and uh, I would just indicate to the court that uh, my client's been on bond and uh, under the conditions of the court for, well, this incident happened a year ago today. Uh, so he's, he's been compliant with all those conditions. Um, he does have gainful employment uh, where he works with Ballard Marine Construction. Derosha? No, it's Derosha Con Marine Construction. I apologize. Um, and part of his uh, requirements of employment are he's on a ship. <coughs> he's required to uh, undergo underwater diving and welding and repairing underwater. Um, the tether machine does not work at, at certain depths, and he has not been able to, uh, I guess, fulfill his duties at work uh, because of that. It, it's become um, a, a problem for him and his employer uh, moving forward. They would they, they'd like to see him in the water and see him diving, and I know he'd like to get back to, to doing that. And, and I would indicate to the court, it's uh, now a year, and um, he has no desire to violate any of the conditions of this court. And there is a no contact uh, provision in, in his bond and he's uh, adhering to that and would continue to adhere to that, Your Honor. I mean, some of the delay in this case you acknowledge was attributable to the defense, right? I mean, the defense wanted to explore an insanity plea and, and wanted a, a referral to the Forensic Center for Psychiatry for criminal responsibility. That is. Okay, so that, that was months correct. of the last year was because the defense wanted to explore that option. That is correct. Okay. Yes. All right, Ms. Goodrich, uh, people's position? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, I would ask uh, for testimony, testimony to be taken uh, by the victim. Uh, in addition, Your Honor, the, the argument here is that uh, the victim is certainly uh, afraid uh, due to the nature of the charges. I know the court is limited on uh, what it can know about the case uh, while pending, um, but certainly the court can review the charges and understand the serious nature of this case. And uh, why the victim would be reasonably afraid. I would ask the court to uh, hear from Ms. Hainer, uh, who is available to testify as to her concerns. Thank you. Let me just take a look at the bond conditions here. Well, again, you know, this court doesn't uh, review an affidavit of probable cause, you know, in setting bond that's that's done in the district court. Um, I do see the uh, bond that had been set in the amount of $25,000 cash assured to be the full bail, which was posted uh, with several conditions. Uh, and the one that's complained of by the defense today is there's a condition for a GPS tether. Um, you know, just even the charges, count one, it's alleged that he was home invasion of the first degree, that he entered into a dwelling while armed with a pistol. Count two alleges that he was carrying that pistol with an unlawful intent. Counts three and four, that he was also carrying two, two different concealed pistols. Count seven tells me he was, is alleged to have been intoxicated at the time. Counts eight and nine tell me that he actually is alleged to have aimed them, aimed the firearm at two different people. I mean, in all honesty, uh, Mr. Nash um, could have easily spent the last year awaiting his trial 
from the confines of the Sheboygan County Jail. I'm going to deny the motion to amend the bond in any respect whatsoever. Okay. Um, even half that stuff is true. He's a dangerous guy. As to the docket call, Mr. Pekeski. As to the docket call, Your Honor, um, again, I know we had a discussion at the bench earlier uh, this afternoon regarding this case. Um, I think it is close to resolution. I, I, I know we've been adjourned, um, and a lot of it has been due to the defense and seeking uh, forensic interview and those things. Um, and, and I'm kind of fresh to the cases. Uh, the attorney of record, my father, is, is a dealing with several health issues and unable to uh, continue on with his practice at this time. I'm just asking for uh, one more brief uh, adjournment so that we can have a, one more fruitful discussion with the prosecutor to try to resolve this matter. Any objection to continuing the docket call, Ms. Goodrich? No objection. All right, well, um, you're here on both of our August dates, but they are already like really pretty super full. Um, do you want us to continue this to the September 7th date, like around 3 p.m. again, or or do you want us to try to cram it in on one of the August dates? I hate to try to cram it in, Your Honor, if uh, that's a number game we're going for, Your Honor. Right. Any objection to that continuance, Ms. Bickert? No objection. What I'll do then is we'll schedule this for a continued back call on September 7th. at 3.10 in the afternoon in person. Anything further from the defense? No, not just From the people? No, Your Honor, thank you. Okay, thank you, have a good day, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. I believe that concludes the conversation. Okay, to all right, well, have a great day. Thank you, you too, Your Honor. Got a four o'clock matter, but it's on a PPO, and so that will not be uh, broadcast on a live stream under current federal law constraints. So we'll go off this time.